Good evening and welcome to the Australian Stock Market Show. Now the All Lord News Index rose strongly last week, so can we expect the Australian Stock Market to return to being bullish? Stay tuned as we'll talk about that shortly. For our main topic in tonight's show, we get into the key sectors that Warren Buffett is buying stocks in and we give you our three great stocks. First up, we'll share our hot stock tip for the week. So sit back and relax. Tonight is jam-packed as we have lots of emails to answer. We'll also take your phone calls and give you the answers to some of the important questions around the market. Tonight we're excited to share our thoughts on some great stocks like Zip, S32, Bank of Queensland, Woodside, Santos and more. So get comfortable as we get into those soon. I'm Dale Gillam and I'm your host for tonight and joining me are two of our team of highly experienced analysts and professional traders, Janine Cox and Philip Tortevsky. And together we are Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Good evening team. Good evening, Good how evening. are you? You're looking particularly lovely tonight, Jane. Oh, thank you. That's nice. Feels not, but so. you are. No <laughs> 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 hey, new joking. But good to have you back. Yeah, good. Yeah, good well, to you've be been on. at the beach eating ice cream. I have. So. I've done it two thank weeks you. in a row now. So. Um, mm. Suit's still fitting, so it's all good. So he it's went to Ben down playing with the rich and famous down at Portsea. Oh, right. Yeah. There you go. Too well, rich then. for me anyway. Okay. But anyway, tonight, as I mentioned, we do take a look at a couple of sectors that Warren Buffett has been buying into. But first, we need to get into this week's hot stock tip. So, Phil, what have you got for us tonight? Yeah, sure. So the hot stock tip for tonight is Pinnacle Investment Management. So let's get straight into it. On your screen right now, on p is the market index. And... Look, um, this company was formerly known as Wilson Group Limited, and it's a financial services company. Ah, yes, yes. That makes sense. That, that rings a bell, doesn't it? Wilson um, Asset Management. Right yes, there. yes, yep. And um, providing distribution services, business support and the like. It um, currently consists of 15 investment affiliates. Now, some metrics on this one. It's had a very good one-year performance. It's beating the sector uh, for one year and also the index, ASX 200, which is quite nice. It's got a market cap of two billion, so on the higher end of the scale, and ranked within the top 200. So, um, in the view of both institutional and retail investors, and if we go to the chart now for this one, what I really like about this stock. Now, if you focus your attention on the monthly chart, to me, sometimes in life you get really, really clean price action, and you get to see the phases of a market really, really clearly because. As we know, you know, markets go through expansionary phases, they go through contractionary, contractionary phases and consolidation phases. And you'll see with this one in particular, we've had this really nice expansion phase from May 2016 all the way up to October. The stocks contracted and also consolidated in this period, only to then go and repeat the process and expand once more all the way up into November 21. And what do you know? It's consolidated and contracted all again. And What's very interesting is now that we're sitting at potentially the end of this contraction phase and just like one plus one, if the next move up is to be another <laughs> expansion, then things look quite rosy for this stock. Um, you'll see also I've marked the contractions here at 66 and 69% respectively. So it is uh, respecting its price cycles. And you know this with Janine, it's very nice when we see stocks that <laughs> do like to uh, respect and mm. repeat price movements. Yes, so you think it's going to do it again is basically what you're saying. Well, we can only go with what we've, what we've seen. And, and so far in the past, it's done this. So that's mm. what's got me really excited. Now, if we move to the weekly chart here, you'll see that I've also marked a trend line. Now, this could be wrong with all our assessors and analysts, so please don't give me a fail, but a, <laughs> a, a downtrend line, which the stock's now breaking up through, telling me that momentum is moving towards being more bullish. It's got a nice little uptrend on following that as well. However, $11 I've marked as a significant level of resistance for this stock. You'll see it's attempted to break it, you know, on four or five occasions in the past as I'm hovering my mouse cursor here. And look, it's poking its head above at the moment on rising volume, which is very, very nice. If it can hold above these $11 and start to push strongly, I see that blue skies for this uh, particular stock and $18, $19 is not out of the equation. And I've got it all out 
quick enough, I hope. Do you have <laughs> anything else to say on this one, Janine? Oh, I don't think I need to get a word in. I think you covered <laughs> it really well. You aced it on that one. Oh, thank um, you. Look, the only thing is it's a nice consolidation across the bottom, like you say. I mm. like that. The only thing is, would is it a buy now or are you saying, would you wait for it to get above that high there of the pattern or you think it's okay just to take it above the blue line? Look, for me, any strong close can, um, above $11 yep, and okay. then even a reaction around that level, if it can hold nicely above $11 and continue on upwards, for me, that's mm -hmm. good enough. So yeah, look, I mean, I'm just looking here. Do you think it might though in the short term pull back below that uptrend line? Look, it, it could potentially or it could blow through it. I like the fact that the volume is rising with the latter end of this move as well. So, um, look, it's poised at a very interesting level, which is why we should be watching it. And it's reported really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, it had really good reporting in February. Um, so it's got a story. It's got a, um, a catalyst. So if it can hold these levels, I would definitely be watching this one. All so, right. so Oh, we finished. Yeah, look. Gee, that was quick. Well, we've <laughs> Time got to goes keep fast when you're with having things fun, moving it? on. We've got lots more stocks to cover and everything else, but I've never seen you so quiet. So but well done, Phil, for that. But that is it for our <laughs> weekly hot stock tip. Now, shortly, we're going to get into our topic for the night. But before we do right now, it's your opportunity to get involved in the show and have your questions answered. Now, remember, we do prioritise phone callers. So call us now on 03 929 0988. That's 03 Or you can text your question to the number on your screen. Now, the first caller into the show right now gets a free copy of my book, Accelerate Your Wealth. So pick up your phone and dial 03 929 Now, while you do that, tonight we will give you our thoughts on the Australian stock market sector. So let's get into it now. All right, on your screen now, we've got a chart of the Australian market sectors. Let's go and have a look at that. So at the top of the board there, you've got financials, um, which is interesting, isn't it, Phil, leading the board? Yeah, because, um, I mean, obviously the big four banks, they've... They've done really well in the last done, few months, yeah. Yeah, so it's not surprising. What is surprising is materials is still down at the bottom. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? You'd think that there's a bit of a comeback story waiting there to happen, minus 7.8%. Um, I don't think that that's going to be the case by the end of the year. And informa another couple of interesting ones we should look at. Information technology we're going to be looking at in the show, so I won't talk too much on that. But real estate's up 3%. That's a nice little figure. But all the rest, um, like healthcare and industrials, it's sort of a bit of a non-event so far, isn't it? For, for well, it's you? funny because it, we, we look at these every week or every every mm. month and it's constantly changing, you know, the, mm. the leader. But w what we're finding, especially with what I really like is the real estate sector. You do. F for okay. me, I've been avoiding that sector for a while uh, and, and looking at it now, it's come up in the top three and, mm -hmm. and it's also um, on the chart, which we, we may or may not get into, but it, it is starting to show some signs and I'm not surprised it's up here in the top three. So maybe we can even go to an RRG graph mm -hmm. now. And So you're not going the contrarian view, you're going the opposite now. <laughs> oh look, uh, sometimes it's good to be a contrarian, but but other times it's, I mean, materials has been down, that, down there for a while. Yep. And, um, good idea. and look, they are volatile, so I'm not surprised, but uh, for now we'll, we'll be uh, conventional. <laughs> Good on you. <laughs> All right, now, um, the relative rotation graph that we've got here, we're just wanting to show people um, how things are unfolding. So if we're looking in that uh, lagging area there, we've got healthcare and we've got uh, consumer staples in there as well. So um, real estate's actually gone through. So what you're mm. saying is that real estate's an opportunity. It looks like it's strengthening there, but these to healthcare and consumer staples could be something to watch. And we've also got energy, which looks like it's coming across here at some point as well um, in the future in utilities. Be interesting to see if financials double back and heads back through there as well. Yeah, I know we were looking at this RRG a while back, even you and I, Dale, even yep. last week on the market report, and we focused on financials and, and mm. a lot of the financials were coming out of that lagging area. Um, and you know now you can see that obviously financials has come out of that. So. Uh, yeah, like you said, it's it's always nice to have a look at this relative rotation graph because it gives us an idea of where to look, where the next move may be. And and look, it's, uh, at the moment, it's pretty much across the board. But like you said, we've got the the healthcare sector, which I know you've mm. been very bullish on. Um, that's coming now, poking its head up out of that lagging. Which is interesting, isn't it? Because CSLs, um, you know, has been so bad extended. News. Bad news, potential pullback on the way. 
but there's still some other opportunities in there. Oh, yeah. Mm. So let's just have a look now at healthcare because that was the one that you suggested. Yeah, let's have a look at that because we're looking at so many sectors tonight throughout the topic. So yes. we had to pick another good one. Um, but just on that, you can see the influence of CSL coming in there this week with this pullback here and that blue bar. Where do we think it could go? Well, look, I mean, it, see, if we look at the history of CSL over the past few years, it seems to want to be around that 4,000 points. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see the healthcare sector head somewhere between 4,200 uh, 4, and 4,000 points as part of this pullback. Any more than that, and then I'd start to get quite concerned about what's happening with CSL. Yeah, because they're, like you mm. said, they're such a big player in, in this right. space. They're the leader and what they do affects the, the whole index. And, and you're yeah. right, you know, the news wasn't great. So, and mar the market has reversed on mm -hmm. the back of that. So for now, the stock in the short term, or sorry, the index is definitely falling in the short term. And like you said, you know, I if it can hold above that 40,000 level, it'd be good. And you'd really want it to, because there's no reason why this can't begin mm -hmm. now to fall all the way back down to the 35, 36,000 mark. That sounds mm -hmm. exciting to me, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. it? Sounds very good. But anyway, that is our thoughts on the Australian stock market sectors. Now, before we get into our first email, remember to get your questions answered live on air, you will need to text or call into the show, or you can also still send your questions to info at wealthwithin.com.au. We'll answer them in next week's show. Now, let's get into our first email question. Now, our first email is from Dino, who says, Hi, Dale, I'd like to suggest a topic for a future show from you and the team which companies will profit the most from falling interest rates which are predicted for later in the year is now the time to buy for the predicted rates fall or is it too early thumbs up for phil he's a good addition to the show cheers dino well you've made the grade mate dino loves you dino's a regular writer into <laughs> Thanks, the show dino. so if dino gives you a thumbs up you're a, you can stay well i'll, I'll look down the barrel and say thank you dino appreciate it mate <laughs> all right interest rates companies which ones will benefit from it property yeah for me mm. property that's property. a simple one isn't it yeah well, look i like that too i i actually really am excited about his suggestion and really want to thank him because i think it's going to be a great topic to get into so we have to work out how we you know what's the angle for that but there's always got to be a good one interest rates going down yep. question mark well, first of all, we should be saying, do we think they will go down? Well, I think to me, I, I'm broader than property. I was like, mm. yes, they will go down. Yeah, when they're talking second half of this year, but not sure exactly when, sec third quarter or fourth quarter mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. calendar year, or first quarter of financial year, second quarter of financial year. So they will go down, but they're not going to do am amazingly like, you know, no, two or three percent. Go they're going to go down quarters and halves. And then as we've seen, the big banks, really lag to put them down but they're quick to put them up mm. Mm. but you're saying real estate will benefit and absolutely yes. it will but then if you've got lower interest rates that means housing housing is more affordable less um, pressure on housing loan repayments they get a bit more free cash so therefore consumer um, spending probably will increase mm. but then you've got businesses if the interest rates are going down cheaper to borrow money mm. so they might be looking to expand now the rates are coming down and the economy might be moving again so that would be my take so yeah which is interesting time. isn't it because our view is that you would mm. want to be expanding too much in this part of the cycle no. given that we could be coming to a peak in the in the whole business and stock market yeah but isn't that the way though you know businesses mm. borrow and everything just like anybody else Things are starting to boom, so they want to expand, they want to do takeovers, they want to open up new stores, they want to Regulators open up new factories. Regulators relax rules on the yep, banks everything gets relaxed, the they go too industry. hard, and then we mm. get the other side of it, which causes the boom-bust cycle. Yeah. So I do love the question, is now the time to be looking at stocks? Yeah, put them on your watch list and start looking at them, but maybe not necessarily to buy, but still buy if they've got good rules. Mm, I agree. Yeah, anything else? Oh, for sure. I mean, we just spoke about the, the property sector is coming out of that lagging on the RRG. So there are signs to definitely be looking at it. Mm. So um, two thumbs up. Dino, Phil loves you as well. But we do have a caller on the line right now. Welcome to the Australian Stock Market Show. You're on with Dale, Janine and Phil. Um, have I got, is it Jack there? That's me. Hey, Jack, how are you going today? I'm great. How are you? Look, fantastic. Thank you for being on to the show. Now, have you got a question for us today? Yeah, I heard you guys talking about financial stocks just a second ago. Um, I've got two financial stocks on my watch list because they're part of the top 20, or I believe they're part of the top 20 ASX stocks, ANZ and Macquarie. Um, to me, I haven't done too much work on either of them, but the big difference between them I can see is that ANZ is about $20 and Macquarie is about $180. 
I've only got a small position size to invest, so I was just wondering you know, which one would you guys recommend me to invest in given my position size? Very, very, very good question. I know a lot of people look at that, you know, do I go with one that's a bit more expensive in terms of price or one that's just a lower price, but great question. Uh, and obviously the top 20 stocks is, more than half of it is financial stocks, I think, for memory. So it's a, they do make up a big chunk of the top 20. So thanks for your call tonight, Jack. Phil, you first. Um, look, uh, we've, we've done a podcast about this for Anzit us. Is Macquarie? That's all he's asking. I mean, it's pretty simple, isn't it? I'm trying to make it complicated. I know you are. Uh, <laughs> um, look, for me, ANZ, ANZ I, yeah. I, I like the fact that it's, uh, I mean, if we bring up the chart here of ANZ, we've, we can do that. we've actually got ANZ on the chart and also on the green line, we've got a Macquarie overlay. Oh, Yes, just good. to provide a bit of a comparison. And look, instantly you'll see the Macquarie's outperformed, yep. um, which, fine. Um, but ANZ has come out of this really, really nice consolidation period and it's had two really, really strong months. Um, January and February have been very, very strong, which is quite contrary to the rest of the market. The market had a really strong December and January and February has been a bit of a so-so month, but this one's really gone on with it. So uh, I, I'm going to go with the value um, today and go with ANZ. ANZ for Phil. Janine, you've got 30 seconds. What do you want? Okay, I'll, I'll stick with ANZ as well. That's Ooh. a short one, isn't it? Because uh, to me, it's also a point of view, because obviously he says he's a newer investor, doesn't have a lot of money. So do you go for volatility in Macquarie, or do you go for more sure and steady with ANZ? I think he's better off with sure and steady, given yeah. he's an investor. Because we know mm -hmm. if the market goes down, Macquarie's going to drop a lot harder. Mm -hmm. Always does. Yeah. But it picks up a lot faster, which what you're talking about. So you got you got three votes for ANZ there, Jack. So thank you for calling in. Now we've got an email from Carol who says, Hi, Dale, Janine and Phil. Hope you are all well just to continue from previous discussions about stop losses. Is it best to set a price alert for stop losses or say for Comsec, for example, enter as a falling sell once you've entered the trade? Also, I entered a trade with RMS, Ramulus, back in May 2023 for $1.32 using a trend line as a medium to long term trade on a monthly chart with a stop loss under the previous trough of $1.17. Um, it has a low to high of 27 to 23 months in previous cycles. Only halfway there if it repeats. A bit of indecision over the last few months, although volume is reducing. Would love to hear your thoughts. Um, are what your thoughts are on this stock. Cheers, Carol. Carol sounds very much like a student of ours, doesn't she? <laughs> she does, and very She's got knowledgeable indeed. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. Why like, does she need us then? <laughs> why does she need us? She's got that nail, doesn't she? Exactly. And everything. So, so looking Janine. at the chart, I really like your choice, Carol. Really nice. And it has trended up beautifully. I'm really excited about where you've set the stop loss, although I'm just wondering, you know, do you have to wait for that? You might even get um, a higher low coming in if it does start to move up. But what's interesting to me, just looking at the shorter term picture of it, is how it just rises, has a consolidation, rises, has a consolidation, then it takes off again. So um, looking at it, I'd say, look, if it doesn't take off below, above this high in the next, say, four weeks, then you'd have to be thinking it's more likely to just continue lower. Mm. Phil? Oh, look, yeah. pic picture book trend. I mean, you couldn't draw a better trend if you want to show an example on the monthly chart. You've got up, up, down, up, down, up, down, higher peaks, higher troughs, really cl clean, really nice price action. And it's actually holding above this previous peak here for now. So okay. more mm. of the same. We haven't talked about stop losses, which was the first part of our we're question. So both avoid. of you have forgotten about this. So I'm on, I'm t I'm on to them, Carol. <laughs> don't you worry about it. Because obviously she's trading monthly charts, asking mm. about stop losses. Should she set them in the system or should she what? The I wouldn't be setting the stop losses in the system okay. for a start. That's the first yeah. thing. Um, and look, you probably are answering your own question as we're, we're talking to you about this. But it's more about deciding whether she's going to trail the stop up yep. or whether she's going to use some special technical um, indicator like a trend line. Yep. You know, uh, that is a trailing stop in itself mm. rather than using a la the low that she's picked, which we show on the chart there. So. At the moment, she's saying 117. Um, how far away is that? Let's just have a look from the current price action because if it's more than, see that to me is too far away to be setting the stop loss all the way under there. It's about 23%. Mm -hmm. The stock hasn't shown in the whole rise that it's had here that it's pulling back to that sort of degree. So I'd just be having a look at how far it's pulled back each time. It seems to be sort of 
doing the same thing this time. Um, I, looking at it, me personally, I, I would just um, put a line across in the sand somewhere right. before that. And I prefer not to let it get all the way down to that low if it was me. Cool. Mm. All right, well, there you have it, Carol, from the horse's mouth and not that Janine is a horse, but she's got good advice for you. But now we do have a text. This one was from Krishna, who is asking about a Zip. Regular viewer, and he's also a graduate of our diploma. Stock has been on an uptrend for a while. Might hit one dollar mark soon. Thoughts on the stock? So, what do we think about the Z1P? Very popular stock. I know all my friends when they got into the stock market around COVID time. This was the that was the stock. This wasn't was it? the hot stock, and, and then it turned into a dog stock. Yeah, they. <laughs> um, I didn't get any phone calls after <laughs> COVID about well, we this. We talked about this on last week's show as well. Mm. This is one that we often talk about because of the way that it's unfolded. Because it is a good stock to learn from, isn't it? Yeah, and, and again, it's been popular. And, and look, Krishna's. Um, it's definitely come and, and, and uh, made a, a mini revival, if, if you will. Uh, it's had a good, almost since October 2023, run up. And did he mention a dollar was, was the target? Or he said, um, can it break a dollar or can it get to a dollar? Because if, like if the yeah. question is, can it get to a dollar, then look, it's almost there. Um, definitely, uh, if perhaps a dollar is a level of resistance, then there are some peaks around here in uh, January 2023 and also November 2022, actually, where there has been some previous resistance. So perhaps the stock is around this level. But look, the way it's gone up and the fact that these bars are expanding on the weekly chart tells me that, and to add volume starting to increase a lot more. So there's definitely action here, uh, Krishna. And uh, look, I, if, if your question is whether it can get through a dollar, then yeah, sure. Yeah, I'd agree with you, Phil, because I looked at it the other day myself. Anyway, yeah. but that is it for uh, Zip Pay. But we do have another text, and this one is from Nathan, and he's about S32. Now, he asks, where do you think it's headed? Have it on my watch list since breaking above a downtrend on the weekly chart around eight weeks ago. Now, I love this stock. I mm. looked at that. I saw it break the trend line. I said, nah. Mm. So... Do you mean, what yeah, do you it think? needed to really test that low, didn't it? Mm. Which is what it's doing at the moment. So it hasn't proven that it's going to fall away yet, even though it looks a bit more ominous at the moment. It mm. may turn around and go back up. Mm. We've just got to be patient. But just looking at the chart, let's have a look. You can see that low there, um, $2.99. $3 is pretty important. So if it takes off down below that, I'd say probably that next level down here, around about 280. I'm hoping it'll turn around 280 mm. if it takes out that low. So that's pretty much where I'm at with that one. Look, I, I love the fact that it's coming back to test this low mm. um, because that's going to give us yeah. a very, very good indication of what's going to happen next. And I like the fact that volume's also falling on this down uh, test. So if it can test now the way it's doing and hold and now break break back above that, you know, 355 mark, then, yeah, I'd be getting excited. So mm. you're waiting for a possible dead cat bounce. If it doesn't do a dead cat bounce, it's just dead. Is that Basically. What saying? Basically, we'll just stay the line anyway on that stock at the moment. Wait, it's a little bit too early, but that is all we have on S32. Now for our topic for tonight. Now we do take a look at a couple of sectors of the market that Warren Buffett has been buying into and how you can cash in on the opportunity. Now we have three interesting stocks to buy and share our view on Berkshire Hathaway's record allocation to cash. Should you be worried? Now, first up, let's take a look at how much cash Buffett has to spend and where he is heavily investing. Now, to find out, we looked at a Morningstar report that shows some financial advisors are asserting that Berkshire's cash, cash and short-term investment hoard is more than $150 billion. Now, this is the largest ever in the company's near 60-year history. What does this indicate? Well, I agree with Morningstar and believe this means that Buffett is finding it harder to find undervalued companies to acquire. Now, if this is correct, this implies that the US stock market is dangerously overvalued. Hmm, I'm not sure about that. But we also looked at their last quarter announcements. Here, Berkshire Hathaway mentioned that their cash holdings were around 157 billion US dollars. As you can guess, the media went into a frenzy on that news and the resulting headlines had some worried. So should you be fearful? Well, what do you reckon, Janine? It's a good question and it's a big number. And it's you know, you look at it and you think, wow, and, and you know, but fearful. Um, when do we get fearful? We get fearful if we don't have a plan and when the market's falling away. That's the only real time to get fearful. If everybody's so. fearful, I'm excited <laughs> anyway. Well, if that doesn't allay your fears, this next point about cash holdings will. 
Now, getting back to Morningstar, they reported that as a percentage of the company's total assets, the reported figure is almost precisely equal to its historical average. As you can see, that is not as dramatic as the media would have us believe. But hey, why let facts get in the way of a good story? Now, this leads to another question. Should you try to invest like Buffett? What do you reckon? <sighs> no. No, <laughs> uh, and, and purely because, for one, you wouldn't want the burden that Buffett has. Uh, it'd be nice to have the billions of dollars floating around. Oh, it's and tough having billions yeah. of dollars to invest. And, and, and how do you move your money where everybody knows about it? Exactly, exactly. And, and that, that in itself is, mm. the, is the point, because we don't have that burden of trying to move around billions of dollars or buying the majority of any share. Um, so that allows us to be nimble as investors and traders and uh, being nimble that allows us to get in and out of stocks and ride the waves of these uh, um, which something Buffett cannot which do. Which is interesting isn't it because sometimes people talk to us and they say oh but you know you're a fund manager or they're a fund manager and therefore you know they can do better or they can buy these stocks and actually the opposite is true the, yeah. the individual has actually got better scope and opportunity haven't they? Yeah and better way to, to enact mm. I mean as a fund manager what a lot of people don't know is you're very limited in the way you can transact. Yeah limited in the stocks you can buy, limited in the way you can trade, um, obviously all the costs that associated with certain types of trading styles that aren't conducive to that. Um, it's quite hard. Okay, well, where would you invest a billion dollars right now? <laughs> in, the, in the Phil Super Fund. In, in, in my uh, <laughs> holiday <laughs> fund. <Yeah. laughs> but you're right, I mean, to me, you know, like, because he can't move the money. He could put all that money into Apple and move Apple. Mm. You know, and Apple's oh, a yeah. trillion dollar company. So that's the thing is, what do you do? And just because he can't find something to buy, just means they're not fitting his criteria at the moment of buying really undervalued companies that he can buy a big chunk of to make a difference on. Mm. But you can take some of the principles of Buffett of how he values companies and put that into investing if you're more medium to longer term yeah, investor. Yeah, I've seen stories he actually likes to eat their products. <laughs> yes, something like <laughs> that. But anyway, well, anyway, now there was one, at least one interesting purchase purchase that Berkshire Hathaway made that caught our attention. Now, Janine, I know you want to know what it is. Occidental, Occidental. Petroleum, which was yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he's bought up Occidental Petroleum. He has had a significant stake in Chevron. Chevron's mm -hmm. just gone and acquired um, more exposure to that industry. So, you know, if Buffett's loading up, you know, that's the big question mark, isn't it? Well, if he's loading up on oil, but I mean, you know, now Janine, just call me silly, but <laughs> why the hell would you increase your exposure to oil given all the push for this net zero and you know, renewables and everything else? Exactly. That's the thing that begs the question, doesn't it? So, you know, the whole world is saying net zero, reduce, reduce, and mm. here's Warren Buffett increasing his exposure. I mm. know. So you didn't call me silly, which was really, really good. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, to me, the market, uh, the answer is quite simple. The market's betting on higher oil prices, so we know that. So let's have a look at what Reuters reported on this. Yes, on Monday last week, there was a deal announced with Chevron that was 58 billion US dollars, and there was a 60 billion dollar acquisition by Exxon earlier this month to add years of oil and gas production to these two top US producers, much of it from US shale oil. Interestingly, these deals will leave European oil rivals further behind in fossil fuels as they've shifted their focus to renewable energy. So, so what you're saying is that Buffett is onto something, that's what you're saying? It's strategic, isn't it? <laughs> yes, exactly. Whilst we would like to reduce our reliance on oil, the reality is that this is a slow burn. Now, if you pardon the pun. Janine, pun away, pun away, all like, you like, Janine. Now, before we get into looking at some energy stocks, um, are there any other major investments we should be interested in? Yeah, there's an interesting one, which is mm. he's put, last year he put a lot of money into Japan, yep. which I thought was a very strategic position. We looked at uh, the Japanese market not long ago yes. on, the, on the chart and it showed how it had actually rocketed off. Okay. Now, you know, with the Japanese currency low, the stock market now rising, there's talk now from Japan that they may start to increase interest rates because remember, they've been at rock bottom. They've been the rest of the world long, has been long, going long, up long, long, and they've long. stayed low. Hmm. So, you know, I see that as a fairly strategic position. But if people are thinking, oh, well, maybe we should go and buy Japanese stocks, I'd say, hey, <laughs> just hold on because it's just about at its all time high at the moment. So that's something to bear in mind. All right. Now, can I say, if you've read my first book, How to Beat the Managed Funds, by 20%, you will know that I say, um, or and that is, what is best for managed funds does not necessarily work for individuals. Now you can get a copy of my book for free. All you gotta do is pay the shipping. Um, now, 
we do have to look at the important sectors that Buffett likes and the best opportunities within those on the Australian market. So let's get into the charts. All right, on the screen there, you can see we've got the um, information technology sector. So that's an interesting one, Dale. Um, I'm looking at the monthly and weekly chart, of course, but on the left-hand side, I've got the monthly chart. So this is a sector that Buffett's investing in because I know he's got some tech stocks well, like Apple. He's is got Apple, and Apple is a huge stock on the, the US market. I think it it's is. the biggest it's, stock. Is this the biggest? And yes. he's got yeah. a significant stake. So a, there's a, we'll see later in the show, actually, I think after the break, we talk about it, but 50% of his portfolio is, is actually tech. exposed to tech. So Which is overweighted in terms of that. I mean, tech in the US in the S&P 500 is about 30% of the S&P 500. Yeah, well, Apple actually mm. looks poised to take off again. So I thought that was interesting mm. that he's, you know, continued well, to hold his stake there. He obviously doesn't now. think that the run is over yet. Yeah. Mm. Got those, so, yeah. so just looking at our market. Now, if we think about the US market, mm. if we're looking at the chart, we can see that the in terms of how far it's got to the all time high, our tech sector still got around 26% before it breaks through that all time high. So there's still upside there. So, you know, we think about lots of stocks in that sector. Um, we're going to talk about one shortly. We've got probably, there's probably six that I would like to mention, but we just haven't got the space for it. But that's one of the sectors yep. that we want to look at. Um, the next one, Phil, is energy. Mm. Um, so that's actually another one where he's obviously increased his stake there. I think it was about something like 10% of the portfolio is in, um, you know, energy, the energy space. So this is the oil companies and others? Oil and gas, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah, yeah. Look, it's um, like you said, it's, it's really it speaks to him being a, a contrarian. He's mm. uh, for, for a, a large part of his life, you know, he's, he's yeah. going against the grain mm. big time here with this investment in oil like you said, given the world's moving to an all an electric future. And look, just looking at the chart here on the monthly chart, we, we can see that not much has happened with energy. It's really consolidating, um, you know, through around that 11,000 mark, which has been a level where it's consolidated before in the past. Um, and it is a level where the stock, you know, since 2005 has always found its way back to it. If we, if we focus that 11,000, you'll see September 06, November 08, each time it's hit this level or well, thereabouts, it's gone on to make a move. So, yeah, dominated by Woodside, Santos, or the big, some of the big players obviously are creating that yeah. formation on the chart. Yeah, and look, given we're range bound at the moment, we're almost, you know, um, stuck in neither here nor there. So, I'd like to see it get through the 12,000 at least to give me more confidence that we're going to shoot on up. Um, but look, it's found support around the 10,000 mark, which is quite important. But, you know, when, when these instruments range sideways, it's, it's always hard to judge where's it going to go until it gives us a bit of a clear indication. Yeah. Well, if his bet's right and we do see a rise in, let's just go back and have another look. If his, his bet's right and we do see another rise, I mean, you know, is it 20, 30? You know, put, put a figure on it. You're talking <laughs> about energy here, Janine, and, yeah. and energy can go anywhere, anywhere, mm. anywhere. So, so just on that, let's go one step further. Let's have a look at the oil price because mm. this is what he's betting on, obviously, that um, energy, oil in particular, is going to recover. And at the moment, the, the, this is light, sweet crude that we've got here. Um, for some of our students, I'll just tell you what the code is so you can look it up. Um, CL2 spot, mm -hmm. it's, it's under the commodities area. So we can see a really strong level, just like Woodside had a really strong level underneath its price. The oil price has a really strong base underneath that. If it takes off to the downside underneath that line, then obviously we know it's going to more of a correction. But at the moment it's holding up. We just need to see a bit of a tick up. Let's just quickly flick to the weekly chart and see what's happening. Um, it's tried, it's found support a number of times down here. It's just making, st starting to make higher lows and, and higher highs. So if we see a move through that high there, we could be on the way again, and that could sort of tick a few boxes, I'm sure, for Warren Can Buffett. Can I throw something in here? Because mm. we're talking about energy, we're talking about Buffett, and we're talking about oil. Yes. yes. Yeah? And what you're talking about is that oil is an energy source. Mm -hmm. But oil is used in so many other things from things like making plastics. Plastic. Sure. Yeah. Truckload of, how do we get rid of oil in our life? Very hard. Well, it's going to be very hard. So we might products, not be using it, it for energy as much mm. anymore, but we're probably still going to be needing it in other areas. So he might be thinking, mm. well, geez, it's still going to be there. And you're going to look at, he owns but, Chevron, right? Mm. Yeah. And Chevron's one of the largest, biggest producers in the world um, for oil. So ExxonMobil and, Sh and, Sh and Chevron are the two biggest. 
and you've got to think they're going to have some plays you know, up their um, you know, up their sleeve, aren't they? Sure. Because if they're going to lose, you know, transport, if that makes sense, transport and, and production for an industry for energy, mm. what are they going to be doing? They're going to be coming up with things that to be using oil, aren't they? Sure. So maybe that's his play. I don't know. What I, do you reckon? I would even wonder if he's al- he's already on top of the fact that he's looking into the future and seeing how ready is electricity. Yes. He might be seeing this maybe not as a 20-year investment, but maybe a 5-, 10-year investment and thinking, Possibly. hey, energy is not ready yet to do the numbers that they're saying they want to do. Um, uh, renewable energy, electricity. Well, it's definitely not in Australia, that's for sure. Mm. Yeah. I've um, got no hope, yeah. Exactly. Mm. So, And he's probably worked the numbers on that and said, hey, look, there's quite a bit more left in this oil game. Well, the industry is consolidating. Mm. We've already seen that BHP sort of pushed its assets over and now Santos and Woodside were going to merge and that's sort of off the table now. But, yeah. you know, there's a whole lot of that, a lot of takeovers happening. And I think that when a lot of takeovers are happening, you really have to look at that space and see yeah. what are the opportunities. Mm. Mm. I mean, obviously, we've got some great energy companies Companies that you guys like, and I'm sure they're going to be on your mm. list. Yep. Mm-hmm. So now we've just talked about energy. Is another is there another sector to look at? Uh, that's it for now for the for sectors. The se- so we're going to look at the stocks now, are we? Yeah, we're going to look at um, to start off. Obviously, Woodside yep. is a big one. So obviously, if he's into the oil and gas, then and you want to sort of em- you know not emulate what Buffett does, but if you want to get <laughs> sort of similar exposures, and this is where it's going to get interesting in the conversation later in the show after the break, we're going to talk a little bit about that. If we look at this chart now, we can see that, okay, $40 is really important for Woodside. Like you were saying, it was showing up on that energy chart before. Yeah. Um, you know, is it realistic to think that, let's just put a, um, a projection on the chart for a minute. I'll just grab one if I can see it there. Um, if, is it realistic to think that we could be looking at $50 for, for Woodside over the next sort of one to two years? Mm. If, if it, well, what if I tell what, you, what if what I- What do you pre- reckon? What if I suggest this? If um, Woodside gets above thirty-six dollars, what would you say then? Yeah, look, we we um looked Short at this stock. Short answer. <laughs> 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 I'd, I'd like to see it get above, get above thirty-eight. Okay. Thirty-eight. Jeez, uh, why don't you just say the high then? You know, come on. What's a couple of um, what's a dollar between friends? Look, just make it the top. <laughs> look, look, what I what I do like about Woodside is the thirty-dollar mark. And mm-hmm. we've, we've spoken about this in, in previous shows, that that $30 mark has been so important that it's really gone back and tested it throughout its life before making mm-hmm. its next move up. So the fact that it is at $30 for me is um, very important. And like you said, look, I'm not going to be as game as you uh, to <laughs> say that it's going to go up past 36 But I'd, I'd like to see at least now some strong upside movements because we've had that four or five months of really, really strong falls and we've only for now got really one month which is in the green and this month February doesn't look fantastic on the monthly charts because it's closing near the low so mm. I'd want to see at least a month or two more of upside to mm. to start doing your uh, projections <laughs> there. <laughs> okay then Santos we're looking at um, what really excites me about Santos <laughs> is the fact that every time people sort of say oh no look they had a there's a bad there's bad news uh, the merger's not going ahead and well, then why didn't sh- it go ahead? Oh, Come on. Do you want to? Well, I mean, Sam, I, Janine's got a conspiracy hat Apparently on, Woodside, Woodside wasn't going to get the deal out of it. I don't think that they thought was going to happen. So, so it just wasn't, wasn't mutually... enough. It just wasn't mutually right, I think. So, mm. but what this does for no traders... No conspiracies at all from you. Yeah, don't worry about all that right now because what's exciting <laughs> from a trading point of view okay. is, is it makes it simpler because the line in the sand is just getting a hell of a lot stronger. Yep. So if we just take another look at the chart, I'll explain. Oh, look, <laughs> go for your life. Don't let me interrupt you. <laughs> okay, then. So we can see that line across there um, at around about $8. Now, how many times has it hit it? You know, back in, was it 2021? One, two, three. It doesn't take Einstein to count, although I might be struggling to count how many times it's hit this line. And now it's gone and done it again and pulled back. Could pull back to around the $7 mark or so, but... Gee, you know, if it does a run up and then takes off, I'm going to put another line on underneath this one. Can I um, ask you something? <laughs> it's stuck between here, yeah. What would you want to see that you were confident above $8 that you, this stock's going to con- continue to go up? Well, that would be a secret and I can't reveal oh. it on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yeah, they're all friends here watching the show. Like, come on. Got, give us something. Give us something. Look, Don't hide everything. You just said, what would I want to see above this figure to, you know, to say, as long as it gets above there. That's all. I'm already clapping my hands. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay, so we enough? got something out of it, didn't we, guys? <laughs> yeah. Something. So, so what else can we see on this stuff? All right, Phil. So next we've got uh, 
Nextex. Now, this is one of the IT stocks. Next DC. Now, Next we were one. really we were really tossing up, weren't we? Because we were looking at some of these stocks, and we knew that one of one of the stocks was one of your favourite Life three hundred and sixty, and we decided not to go with your favourite. Why not? <laughs> Just to be we controversial. We thought we'd save it for another day. <laughs> Oh, I mean, next DC is down this week, so I mean, you know, hey, <laughs> look, um, it, it's it's breaking all time highs. It, I know, but it's down this week. Yes. <laughs> down yeah. So, so what do you say? All right, well, let's throw it back at back at Dale. Yeah. What do you say to someone where a stock's gone through a new all time high? What What do I say? Yeah. Get excited. Yeah, mm. that's yeah, right. Because there's blue sky, and to me, and but that's scary for some people, isn't mm. it? It's like, oh. I now don't have any reference points because if you know if a stock's gone from ten dollars to five, mm. you think, well, it was a ten dollar stock, so stands to good reason that it'll probably get back up to ten dollars. Mm. But once it gets through ten dollars, well, how much is it worth? Well, mm. we know you can just multiply it up then, can't you? Now you can just multiply <laughs> up. Next DC, great stock. I mm. mean, it's mm. data centres. You know, there's a data centre down the road in Port Melbourne here that we've used. It's got data centres all around Australia, so it's. You've got to think cloud is mm. a huge expanding oh, yeah. industry. And there, Next DC would be hosting Amazon Web Service in there. They'd be hosting other web servers like Akamai Web Servers, which are huge. They were the first. It's all big critical network. stuff. It's fundamental it's all to the way that we live stuff. today. Yeah. yeah. Well, mm. like you rightfully said, a lot of people, when they talk um, IT, they talk about the software side of things. Mm. No one really talks about the hardware, these right. data centers that need to get built to support all what this stuff. What do you stuff. think the cloud is? It's the data center. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it doesn't matter what cloud you're using, whether it's, you know, Amazon or whether it's Microsoft or whatever, mm. they're just computers in a big data center somewhere, yeah. um, whether it's in Australia. And obviously in Australia, as a financial services company, because we manage clients' money, mm. we have to have that data on servers in Australia. To me, this so is just such an like exciting that. story. Mm. I mean, this is this is what it's all about. At the grassroots, the, the, the mm. company started out, they raised capital and then they built... I mean, yes. this costs money, big money to build these yeah. data centres, and it's a huge risk, and yet it's mm. so successful. And look, now the stock's making all new all-time okay, so highs. What is the chart saying, Janine? All right. <laughs> um, yes, it's gone to new all-time highs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> new all-time so, highs. It's down this week by yeah. about a half a percent, but it's new all-time highs. So, look, highs. I mean, you've got to have some decent rules, obviously, on it if you're choosing to look for this sort of thing and you're wanting to buy it. But at the moment, it's got a trend line under it. If I can just grab a little trend line in there because it's gone to a new all-time high, so we can get one in under there. Um, so it's got an, So in terms of the risk, it's relatively low in terms of managing that downside if it did fall away. Um, so therefore, that's what you're talking about. So this is an opportunity. I mean, example. this is what this is about. This is an opportunity yeah, for so, people. So like, you know, Buffett's obviously got exposure to energy. He's got exposure to tech. Yep. Um, and there are some other sectors we're going to talk about later that he's got exposure to as well. Yep. So these are areas that then, while we say you can't emulate what Buffett does because you're not trading in the billions, and that's a much tougher job anyway. But you can he, look for he can look for value in the sectors that he's got exposure to because he must know something. Correct. Mm. You know, and obviously tech in Australia, we still think it's going to do. Financials That's another area. And tech. That's another one but he's got. Other, mm. There are a lot of tech stocks in Australia that are good, but we don't have the tech industry mm. like the US. Mm. So I totally understand that. But there are some good things to pick exactly. out of our tech sector because it gets pretty thin on the ground after you get out of the top 10, well, doesn't look, it? You know, all these good companies will continue to rise as mm. the stock market goes up. Mm. Yep. So anything more about, is this a buy right now? Um, look, it, 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 it can be. If you're one of those traders that looks to buy, um, you know, breakouts, and the story is great, like you said, it's, it's making new all-time highs. All I'll, all I'll point out here is if we just look at the monthly chart, it's not uncommon each time a stock makes a new all-time high that it does have a bit of a pullback. And we've seen it here in 2013 when it, when it made a new all-time high, it pulled back a touch. We've seen it when it broke the all-time high in 2016, a habit of a pullback. Yep. Again, it had a small pullback in 17 so you see that it, it is not uncommon if it does pull back so i wouldn't be against the idea of waiting and seeing seeing how it does now that it's broken the all-time high seeing if there are going to be those sellers taking the short-term profits and then potentially looking for an entry or if you're looking at this more long-term uh investment style you can get in here with with confidence that this is going to keep going yeah i know sometimes you see a stock and it's an all-time high there are people waiting above the all-time high to buy in and they go in and exhaust themselves and you get the profit takers coming in and take it back down to the all-time high again. Yeah. It gives you a second go at it. So that's really what you're saying. Basically, yes. So mm. I love what you're talking about. Okay, so what's the next one? I was just going to say he said it like a true politician. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> because, <laughs> Phil did. Yeah, 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 because like, you know, is that a buy now? You know, I mean, there are always reasons why we could say buy and you sure. hit those on the head, yes. you nail those. Um, why, why not to buy right now? Well, that would just depend on, you know, mm. a strategy or whether all the stocks that you've got in your portfolio. But let's just say okay. that you already had six stocks that were in your portfolio that mm. were tech stocks. Yep. Would you add another one? Probably not, no. Mm. No. So is that, have we got one more stock? Oh, that's pretty much, um, we've covered the, we've the covered oil the and the IT. Yes, yes, that's right. Okay, so we've done all of that anyway. We've done that. We're going to leave the other two sectors and the stocks after for after the break. Oh, okay, I just I thought you were going to try and sneak <laughs> another one in. Janine Janine says I have a baker's dozen. She says I'll do six, and she does eight. But anyway, well that is it for our topic tonight. Stay with us as we've still got plenty of emails and stocks to go through. But before we get into those. For those watching on YouTube, you can watch all of tonight's show plus the exclusive content on TalkingWealth.com. So head over and grab your free seven-day trial. Now, the benefit of being a Talking Wealth member is that you get our in-depth approach to lots more stocks and our answers to even more questions. Another bonus is that every Monday I produce my weekly Australian stock market report where I share my views on the market and share some great opportunities that I know that just one will definitely pay for the yearly subscription. On top of that, you also get hundreds of amazing interviews with industry experts from around the globe. This is all on talkingwealth.com. Moving on, we'll get into some more questions. So now's your time to pick up your phone and give us a call on 03929099988. That's 03929099988, or you can text the number on your screen. Now, whilst we wait for your call, let's get into our next email. Our next question is from Craig, who says, Hi team, great show as always. I would like to hear your thoughts on Bank of Queensland. I haven't bought it yet, but it looks interesting for short to medium term trade. Many thanks, Craig. Phil, Bank of Queensland. Look, I like it. You like it? I like it. It's a good choice. And yeah. um, look, if we go to the chart here, it's um, if we focus on the monthly chart, what I really like about this stock is that if we zoom into April 2000, it's repeating price action of the past. And I really like this. If we see uh, April 2009, the stock ran up over about a six month period. And then it almost took from 09, April 09 to April 12, at 12, it took three years of falling on the stock, but it didn't take out the low from April 09. And then we saw a really nice run. And price action is very much repeating itself today. We've seen April 2020 rise up really strongly and it's taken almost two years of falls now so it's falling at double the the time but less than less what in a, price less in price so to me that tells me that you know if something's taking twice as much work to not do the same result then uh, it's really telling us a, a story that the buyers are perhaps looking to really push this one well, on the next one that the sellers aren't voracious and as, they, as they used to they're be. trying their best they're trying their best they're not pushing it too far down they're trying their best and, and we're seeing look if we zoom in a little closer and uh, um, price action on the monthly we're seeing that um, we've had a good few months ticking up on this stock you could almost even draw a trend line here and and actually you know what I'll do one because we can always talk about drawing one but let's draw one and we've got a trend line here on the monthly chart and it's what do you know it's got two closes above the the trend line on the monthly so for some it's already an entry so short to medium term that's what he's talking about no issues with it no issues with it yep any last words from tonight? Uh, good choice. I really like it. So keep up the strategy. Whatever you're doing to pick stocks, you're picking really good ones. And look, you know, I'm excited by that start, little sideways consolidation that yep. so Phil was talking with about. Phil? Yeah. Mm. Well, there you go. That was short and sweet, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I cool. like it. Well done. <laughs> anyway, our next email question is from Ramesh, who says, Dear Dale, uh, Janine and Phil, I have finished modules one, two and three of your short course. I really wish I had done it sooner. Um, I have a smaller position in Clearview Wealth Limited. Um, I probably should have waited until I finished modules four and five before thinking of entering this stock because there's not much volume to it at all. Um, it has remained at around 58 cents where I purchased it on the 29th of December. I have a slightly higher than 15% stop loss on it at 48 cents. What are your thoughts on CVW and my stop loss. So, Janine? Very interesting. Um, in terms of your stop loss, just having a look at the chart there, um, on, 
which will be on your screen in a moment, um, it's just, it's quite at a logical level. So in terms of the, the position that you've got it, and I'll just expand it up. I've just got the whole history of the stock there because I want to show you something else. Um, but if we're looking at the shorter term projection there, you can see that, that it's in terms of where it is here, 58 cents down to this level here, um, I think he's got about a 15% stop loss on it, which is fine. It's right near that low there. So quite often when we're looking at a stock, if it's sort of really close to a, a, a strong support level, we might allow a little bit more um, than that, just because sometimes stocks can come down to those sort of levels and flick back up again. But this is a monthly chart that we've got here. So for, for this stock to move all the way down there, I'd be pretty concerned about it anyway. So before I go back to show you what that black line is, I want to just look at the short term movement. I'm liking this consolidation. There's a little pattern unfolding there. So I think if it got above this high here, 60 and a half cents, I'd be quite excited about where it's going. Um, in terms of the short term, I would just be really worried about it if it goes back below that 55 cents. And I probably wouldn't want to give it too much room to move. I'd probably prefer to treat this sort of stock because it is a bit illiquid. You can see it is illiquid. I'd, I'd rather take the, take the exit tighter and then get back in again if the opportunity allows to get back in at a place that makes sense. So that's mm. my position. But can I just go back to the monthly because I just would like to share something with you. So often what we say is when stocks take out their all time low. So prior to this, this was the all time low back in 2009. Now, when it corrected in the, in the COVID, and it was already in a long decline before, before COVID. So obviously this is nothing to do with COVID, but it took out that low there. Now, quite often stocks will want to, tr you know, when they've traded through a low and made a new low, they'll want to come back towards that. So there's still a risk in, you know, there's slight risk that it could try to come back below there mm. again. Mm. Now, Ramesh had a few more questions for us and he goes on to ask, given the illiquidity of the stock, I'm worried the stop loss may trigger, but my order may not get filled. Now, I'm currently thinking I should sh simply get out because I don't think I have the skills for this type of stocks right now. So what do you think of that? Mm, Phil? Look, it's a good so still question. Same stock, it's everything. a good question to ask mm. because it is a stock that's more volatile. So it's one of those ones that you do want to be, you do want to know what you're doing. Mm. You do want to have the skill set um, to be able to navigate this particular space. And in terms of whether the stock's liquid enough or not, I mean, we can go to the daily chart here. I, and look, mm. we can see on the daily chart that the stock does tend patchy. to, it is a bit patchy and it does tend to gap. But I mean, even with what I'm looking at here, I don't think that there's too much of a concern of, of him being able to get out, yeah. uh, particularly at 48 cents. All I would say is just keep your eye on this stock because it does gap um, and there is the potential that it could gap below your sell price and you, you're not there to, to yeah. watch it and, mm. and obviously the stock keep going. So just I, I'd say just keep your eye on it um, when you are looking to sell it. And, and, um, but in terms of the volatility, it, it, it's there and, and there should be enough liquidity to uh, get out. Now he's got one more question um, and it's on another, but he said it's potentially a related topic. Now, once exiting out of the stock such as CVW, would you simply enter into a new trade or considering purchasing more shares in stocks you currently own on the trend line or just always buying on the trend line just risky. Uh, he's also saying thanks for everything we teach. It's simply invaluable, Ramesh. Do you want to answer that? Ramesh, uh, good questions. That's very broad that you just, <laughs> you're just trying to go for everything there, it seems. So excuse me for saying that. How I know you're thinking outside the box, which is great. I think that if it was me and you wanted to trade this stock in the first place, then I would stick with it. But you're right, you do need some good rules. Um, if you're reading both the Dale's books, that will really help you to, to understand things. But we, I've just given you a few points on potentially how you might look at it in terms of the short term picture. But, you know, the mm. fact that your gut feel is telling you that you're concerned about it is probably for good reasons. Yeah. So therefore, maybe that stop loss, if you really ask yourself the truth, maybe too um, far away in terms of the yeah. dollars for him. I was mm. going to suggest from Mesh, because you, you said you're going to go into modules four and five, straight away you're going to get trading essential services. So they're the qu last questions that you've given to us, really, really good questions to give your team when you get into module four and start helping them get getting them to help you with your trading on this stock and working out what the plan is for you moving forward. So I'm not sure whether you finished module three or not yet, um, but as soon as you finish it, get straight onto them and they'll start helping you. But guys, we do have a phone caller now. Uh, welcome to the Australian Stock Market Show. You're on with Janine, Phil and Dale. Who have I got there, Nick? Yeah, hi Dale, it's Nick, how are you going? 
Good, mate. Good to have you on the show. So thanks for calling in. Have you got a question for us tonight? Yeah, mate. It's about JB Hi-Fi. It's recently broken uh, an all-time high. Yep. Um, looks like an entry there. I just wanted to get your thoughts on whether you think it's going to pull back a bit and what your price projections are for the stock. Short, medium, long term? Um, medium to long. Yep, medium to long term. So, yeah, obviously you're looking to buy all of that. Interesting with JB Hi-Fi, it announced that less profits and stuff like that, or its profits were down, but it shot up. So, good. I hoped somebody was going to call in about that tonight. So, thanks, Nick, for calling in. Janine, JB Hi-Fi. Yeah, Hi this is an interesting it one because, you know, if you go into a JB Hi-Fi store... You and the man's see, second favourite store, yeah, you Bunnings, see, JB Hi-Fi. What do you see? Lots of enthusiastic people yes. who want to help you to buy something. Do you? For me, that sort of ticks a box. And they have a really good staff policy that ticks a box. Their staff actually like the company. How many stores do you go into and you see that sort of enthusiasm? Obviously, they don't like them in David <laughs> Jones and Maya, do they? They really don't. Um, so, you know, that ticks a box. But in terms of answering directly the question asked, yes. um, I think that he's really onto something here because mm. this could be a bit of a sort of a, it's been a blow off in the share price. And often when you see these sorts of huge accelerations, in, and I'll just show you the weekly chart and expand that up. Often when you see these sorts of big moves, it doesn't last for too much longer, especially after reporting season. What other news is going to, you know, everything's already out. They have to yeah. declare everything. Um, mm. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. And if they haven't, then it'll, you know, show up later. But I would say that, you know, what what else are, the, are people going to buy? How far on? do you think it's going to go? That was one of his questions. Mm. Nick was asking. Do you I don't that? think too much further is my view. Nick? Nick's asked Nick, the question. Uh, look, it's broken a new all-time high, and, and yeah. the way it's done it, it's so parabolic for me. I'm expecting a pullback. Um, mm. And it's not, if we go to the monthly chart, it's not necessarily in the nature of this stock, especially over the last, since 2020, you know, it's really been quite steady, a little bit choppy, if you will. Um, but these, this move out here is, is quite um, unexpected. I know that, it, you know, it had another big move back in May, so it goes up for about a year and then yeah, that's it, isn't and, it? Yeah, and what, what's mm. normal with this stock that it takes some time, you know. That's taken almost a year, that move there. Um, this one's taken about four months, but it's not as strong as, as the current move. In three months, it's moved probably the most volatile price rise that it's had um, in, in its life. So, okay. um, yeah, it's a bit, a bit out of left field. So you got me confused because mm. you like the stock. Mm. Nick's looking to buy short to medium term. I'm saying but wait. You're saying wait. Wait. And you're saying no at all at the moment. Wait. I'm just saying no. Not you You're can't. both waiting for a pullback. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying you're not agreeing with Nick it's a good buy. No. So it could be a good buy. Yes. Okay, that's what you're saying. I'd okay. say it's a higher risk time to be buying it I right now. I can't get it out of it, can I? She won't say it. But <laughs> Nick, you've got two thumbs down over there. They don't necessarily like your choice. But I'm sure there's some other stocks that we've talked about t today anyway that you might be able to get into. Anyway, let's get on to our next question, which is from Chris, who says, Hi, Dale, Janine and Phil. I purchased EOS only a week ago and was up 20% at this point. I set a trailing stop loss at 5%. Now, to predict profits as a stock that can go up this quickly can also go down. Now, we continue to rise before pulling back and I took a 31% profit. Do you think I set this trail too tight? I'd love to hear your th opinions. Thanks, Chris. Janine. Okay, let's answer his question first. Has he set the, the trail too tight? Um, possibly. Um, I would just say yes. That's probably <laughs> easy. Right? Yes. Depends on what the trading strategy is because, you know, I mean, if he, if he set a, a stop like just a few percent away, 5% away, 6% away, 10% away, depends. If he's only trading short term, that's probably okay. Can I, can I say something? He's mm. in, what I'm saying is that's not a good trade in my book. You know mm. how we talk about you know, for our students when we're teaching people to trade well. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't matter how much money you make or how much money you lose, as long as you follow rules. His reason for setting that really tight stop loss is because he didn't want to lose his profit. Mm. But that should never be an intention of a trade. It's to trade well, to trade the full length of a move, which is having a solid well, entry and solid exit. He's still got to protect his profit as well. Like that's yeah, but the that's, thing. But that's what and, I'm saying. And that's when, not a stock, the goal. when a stock accelerates away and blows yeah. off, look, if you just look back at the chart to give us an example, mm -hmm. it's only, you have to look at the history because if it's gone up one, two, three weeks in the yeah. past as a blow off, which is a fast acceleration, and then it's gone up one, two, three, four weeks, and here it's gone up one, two, three weeks, 
you know that it's probably not going to go up very far, too much further. And also, how far is it pulled back each time? Mm -hmm. Here, it's actually pulled back, what, 25% from that point, you know, and here it's pulled back around 36%. So, you know, if he doesn't have a proper and really tight exit strategy on it, yep. there's a potential that he's going to, you know, drop all of that profit and wait quite That's a long time about, before yeah. it taking off again. All right, Phil, mm. our short-term oh, guru. Yeah, I'll look, I'll simplify it all for you, Chris. If if you had this intention before you took this trade, if you were planning that you're going to sell out at 30%, then I'd shake your hand and say, well done, you stuck to your rules. If this was late in the piece and the fear came in about, you know, potentially losing your profit, then to me that tells me that you haven't really planned this trade on the sell side. So yeah. I would encourage you that you do that um, moving forward when you're trading. Make sure you plan not only your buys, but you plan your sells, because when you start doing things like trailing stops, unfortunately, this is the game you're playing. You, yeah. There's a, so many times where you, you try to trail a stop up and it triggers your sell only for the stock to continue on running. And the main thing in this game is to let your profits run. And the way you do that is by preparing how you're gonna get out before you even enter the trade. Correct. So for me, um, I'd say, look, uh, just maybe a little bit more structure around how you're selling, it'll, it'll really alleviate you having even to ask these questions in the future. Yeah, because the answer to whether it's a too tight a stop loss or not is in the plan first, mm. which is what I was getting at. A yeah. good trade is following your plan from start to finish, mm. and that's, that's what it. Phil's saying. But thanks, Chris, for sending in the email. It really does give us an opportunity to give lessons to everybody. So hopefully you do take that advice from the boys um, over there and Janine, the good-looking one sitting next to me. But remember to hit that button and show your support for the channel and by clicking the subscribe it does help others find our channel and so we can help them too now remember to show your support for us by commenting below this video after the show because we'd love to hear your favorite part now remember give us a big thumbs up it helps new people discover the channel uh, that's it from us for our youtube viewers for talking well subscribers stay tuned for the bonus content that we promised Next week in our main topic, we share what we believe are the best metals and mining stocks and we answer the question whether you should buy Rio Tinto. So make sure you join us next Tuesday night at 7pm Australian Eastern Time. If you love the show, then show your support for the team that puts in an effort into bringing it to you each and every week. Give them a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. That way you'll know when we put up more content. As always, thank you for joining us. For now, goodbye, good luck and good trading.